the program today, we will be discussing three aspects of veterinary medicine. The treatment of domestic animals and large animals and the prevention of epidemics. Veterinary medicine is recent. For a long time, we were resigned to letting our animals die. Even though human medicine progressed, animal medicine remained rudimentary. It was only during the 20th century that we began to treat animals. Most city vets treat pets. Cats and dogs account for the vast majority of the cases brought in. A large part of a veterinarian's job consists in vaccinating them. However, when a faithful companion has been injured or is sick, veterinarians will do their very best to save its life. Like us, animals can be hurt in an accident or afflicted with illness and diseases. Fortunately, for some years now, small animals have access to hospitals very similar to hospitals for humans. Here, they receive treatment and care that are not all that different, both in terms of quality and diversity, from what their masters receive. When a sick or injured animal is brought to emergency, the first thing that is done is to open a medical file for it. The pet is then quickly taken to an examination room. Here the veterinarian goes over the animal's history. Obviously he cannot question the animal, but by talking to the master, he tries to gather all the information he needs to make a diagnosis. The veterinarian will then proceed to examine the animal thoroughly. He takes its temperature, sounds its chest, checks its pulse and breathing. The animal's behavior also gives him clues about its condition. For example, small dogs show their pain more than big dogs. If necessary, the veterinarian will order specific tests. For example, blood and urine samples are sent to the hospital laboratory to be thoroughly analyzed. The count and examination by microscope of the blood cells will determine whether the animal is anemic or fighting an infection. A biochemical blood and urine analysis will also enable him to evaluate how well the animal's vital organs are working. For instance, if the level of glucose is too high, it may mean the animal has diabetes, an ailment of the pancreas common in dogs. Another common test, analysis of the feces, will reveal whether or not the pet has parasites. The eggs of several species of parasites can be detected and identified under a microscope. Today, vets too have access to leading edge imagery technology. First class pedigree dogs born of highly selective breeding are frequently subject to congenital malformations of the hip. X-rays will reveal a fracture in an injured animal or malformations in its bone system. Echography is also common practice in veterinary medicine. A probe sends ultrasound toward the animal's internal organs, then picks up the reflected waves. This technique not only enables the doctors to see the fetuses of a pregnant animal, but also to diagnose certain ailments. For instance, through echography, a vet can examine an animal's heart in detail to see if there are any abnormalities. Together with the physical examination, these varied tests help a vet to make his diagnosis. He can then establish a treatment plan. The plan may simply consist of administering a drug, such as an antibiotic, if a bacterial infection is suspected. If this is the case, the patient receives a prescription from the doctor, which its master can have filled out at the hospital drugstore. However, hospitalization is often necessary. In accident cases for animals whose condition is unstable, 
This is done in an intensive care unit. In such units, a wounded animal's heart or blood pressure can be monitored. In some more serious cases, an operation may be called for. Through surgery, vets can now help and cure animals of diseases that used to be considered incurable. These diseases can range from cancer to heart problems. Veterinary surgery is based on much the same principles as human surgery. The animal is first taken to a pre-operative room where it is shaved and thoroughly disinfected. The animal is anesthetized by the injection of a drug. The patient is then transferred to the OR, the operating room, which is kept in absolutely sterile condition. The animal is anesthetized during the operation through a respirator that forces a gas into its lungs. This procedure makes it possible to adjust the strength of the anesthesia to the animal's size and progress. When the surgery is completed, the animal is taken to a post-operative room where it soon regains consciousness. When it is able to stay on its belly and its temperature is back to normal, it will be allowed to leave. It will only require a short convalescence before getting back on its feet. Owing to breeding conditions, large animal veterinary medicine is becoming increasingly different from that of domestic animals. Veterinarians have therefore become highly specialized. Some diseases can affect the output of herds, and every type of cattle breeding, be it beef, dairy cows, sheep, or pigs, has specific characteristics of its own. In the old days, farmers were often forced to put one of their injured or sick animals out of their misery. Fortunately, times have greatly changed. In our society, large animals are a very valuable economic commodity. For example, race horses are produced through genetic selection and rigorous training. These athletes of the animal world are able to accomplish amazing feats, while at the same time raking in large amounts of money for their fans. However, these champion animals are vulnerable. During their training and in competitions, they are often injured and fall prey to illnesses that, if not quickly treated, might well throw their owners into bankruptcy. Luckily, veterinarians are increasingly well-equipped to diagnose and treat sick horses. Upon arrival at the hospital, the horse is first examined by a vet who must determine the seriousness and urgency of the case. Respiratory ailments are common in these animals. These problems can be caused by an infection or an allergy to substances in the atmosphere, including hay. Unfortunately, they are often undetectable when the animal is at rest. This means that in order to diagnose them, veterinarians have to conduct a whole series of tests. Stethoscope auscultation enables them to localize the affected area and assess how extensive it is. To make the test easier, a bag is placed over the horse's muzzle. This emphasizes the breathing difficulty. There are more recent technologies available to vets. For example, x-rays and echography allow them to view the lungs and spot possible abscesses. A fibroscope will give them an inner image of the animal's respiratory system. This instrument projects a beam through fine optic fibers. It is carefully inserted into the animal's respiratory tract and connected to a video screen. Thanks to all these tests and the patient's medical history, the problem can be pinpointed. 
If the vet suspects a bacterial infection, lab cultures will help identify the microorganism responsible. The treatment will then simply consist of administering an antibiotic medication. However, in some cases, sick horses require surgery. Once seldom performed, surgery can now cure many a sick or injured horse. The horse is prepared by the use of an intravenous catheter, which facilitates the administering of the anesthesia. The horse is anesthetized with a barbiturate, a drug that puts the animal to sleep and makes it lie down. The horse is then put on an operating table equipped with adjustable panels. This system enables the medical team to move the animal into a position ready for the surgery. The operating room is kept meticulously sterile. Indeed, horses are especially vulnerable to infections. While the surgeon operates, an anesthetist monitors the animal's vital signs and adjusts the level of the anesthetizing gases. When the surgery is over, the horse will revive very quickly. To prevent it from injuring itself, it is taken to a padded post-operative room. It is also given sedatives so it will not awaken too abruptly. Later, the horse will be able to leave the hospital. It will require several weeks of convalescence before it can run again. In recent years, giant strides have been made in equine surgery. However, veterinarians do more than treat animal diseases. For instance, researchers are developing computer software programs to help manage the health and productivity of herds. A breeder of dairy cows, for example, has a number of tasks to remember and perform. A cow only begins to produce milk once she has calved. The breeder has to breed her right at the end of her reproductive cycle in order to begin another cycle as soon as possible. Such controlled breeding requires that a great deal of information be memorized. A mistake of only a few months can translate into a major loss to the breeder down the line. The computer can help breeders to avoid making mistakes like these. Day after day, the farmer enters his observations on how much milk every cow produces and its stage of production. This data is sent to researchers on a regular basis for analysis. Their analysis will tell the breeder when is the best time to breed each of his animals. This new approach, which gives an overview of the whole herd, may also contribute to keeping it healthy. It allows breeders to detect possible health problems and to prevent them. Concerned with prevention as well as cures, veterinary medicine is instrumental in improving the profitability of husbandry. Researchers in veterinary medicine work hard at finding ways to eradicate the epidemics that ravage herds of cattle. Some diseases are so contagious that if one animal shows signs of infection, the whole herd is examined. All the contaminated animals, whether symptomatic or not, have to be put down. In severe cases, the cattle is prevented from circulating from one region to another to keep the disease from spreading. However, it is not enough to contain disease within a country. Every country has set up strict regulations with regard to the importation and exportation of livestock. In most countries, importing and exporting live animals and animal products are an important part of the economy. However, export-import activities are two-edged. In every country, a number of diseases affect domestic animals and wildlife alike. As a rule, these diseases are kept under control. As a result of thousands of years of evolution, the animals of any given country have developed a certain immunity to their pathogenic agents. But a new disease may accidentally be introduced into another country 
through the importation of contaminated animals or goods. The fragile balance is then disrupted. Local animals may not have any resistance to the new sickness. It may degenerate into a full-fledged epidemic with disastrous economic repercussions. To avoid such an accident, the health administrations in many countries have set up preventative control systems and swift measures of intervention. At international seaports and airports, arrivals of living animals and their byproducts, such as meat and dairy products, are rigorously controlled. There are strict regulations for importing meat and dairy products. When they first arrive in a country, most animals are first taken to quarantine stations. Quarantine allows the specialists to detect and contain any possible chronic carriers of disease. Chronic carriers have a disease without presenting any of its symptoms. During quarantine, the animals are subjected to various tests. Only when all the tests have proven negative are the animals released. Occasionally, though, a sick animal or a contaminated product will slip through the controls and find its way onto a farm where it can trigger an epidemic. If during a regular visit, a veterinarian suspects an animal of having a contagious exotic disease, emergency measures are set in motion. Blood and tissue samples are quickly sent off to a specialized government laboratory. The samples, considered as potentially hazardous substances, are handled with great care. They undergo a battery of diagnostic tests. One of these tests consists of observing the samples under an electron microscope. This instrument allows the technician to quickly identify the main pathogenic virus strains. To precisely identify a pathogen, the cultures are inoculated in receptacles containing animal cells in culture. When they infect the animal cells, viruses will generally alter the aspect of the cells. That alteration is somewhat like the virus's signature. By examining the changes in shape of the infected cells under a microscope, the experts can determine the nature of the virus. One of the most effective tests to screen and identify microorganisms is the ELISA test. It detects the presence of the antibodies produced by the organism to combat infection caused by a pathogenic agent. The presence of such antibodies is made visible with colored markers. These tests enable the researchers to rapidly analyze the samples from the suspected animal. If they are positive, an alert goes out. Teams of vets immediately converge to isolate the sick animal or animals and wipe out the epidemic at the outset. While highly effective, these controls and measures never quite eliminate the chances of an epidemic. However, there is a new technique that may prevent the transmission of animal diseases between countries. It consists of importing and exporting animal embryos rather than adult animals. The embryos themselves may be carriers of pathogenic agents. To rid them of such agents, the embryos are cleansed in a saline solution containing antibiotics. This treatment eliminates any agents that might be present on the surface of the pellucid area. The researchers are careful to make sure that the pellucid zone, an effective pathogenic barrier that covers the embryo and protects it from infections, is intact. Embryos having received this treatment are considered disease-free. They are then frozen in liquid nitrogen and transported thousands of miles away, where they will be implanted in surrogate mothers who will give birth to perfectly healthy animals. In 
the years to come, this technique may well revolutionize animal importing and exporting. For cattle farmers, a sick sheep would not justify costly surgery or complex treatment. But if that sheep were your favorite animal, if it recognized you and came to eat out of your hand, veterinary medicine would probably find a way to keep it alive for a very long time. Thank <laughs> you.